we're looking at population growth today, and we're going to look at two ma mathematical models. Um, the first one is called the exponential model. And the curve that you'll see with an exponential model um, looks like a J-shaped curve. So as time goes on, the population increases, and it's increasing exponentially. This doesn't really happen exactly like this in nature. This is an idealized curve um, for an unlimited environment. So an unlimited environment means that there's no predators. It means that um, there's lots and lots and lots of resources. And it means that um, your waste isn't building up at all. But it's important to understand the, um, the idealized environment when you look at the real thing. And so we're going to look at um, the rate of increase depending on birth and those organisms coming in. So we'll look at birth rate plus immigration rate. And then that has to be balanced out with those leaving. So death rate and emigration rate. So think about immigration as those coming in and emigration as those exiting. And so this is going to give you your um, growth. And we're going to call that R max. So I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But this is just a quick video. This is just a quick um, picture to show you emigration. So this one is leaving. So it's emigrating from here. And it's coming into this area. So it's this same bird is emigrating from one area and immigrating into another. Okay, per capita rate of increase. Per capita means for each organism. And so a change in a population size is the births plus the immigrants minus those who are leaving due to either death or emigration. So you can write it like this, or you can say birth rate plus immigration rate and uh, subtract the death rate plus the emigration rate. Okay, so either one is fine. A, a vocab word you'll see is mortality. Mortality means death. So if you're looking at infant mortality, it's the death rate um, among infants, for example. Okay, so now we're finally getting to the math. And these letters are all defined on your um, AP Bio uh, cheat sheet. So that's nice. So this is the change in the population size over time. And that equals the birth rate minus the death rate. Um, so they're at this point assuming that there's no immigration and emigration just to make life easier. But if you did need to consider those, you would have to say birth plus immigration minus death plus emigration. So those coming in or being born minus those um, leaving, whether it's through death or emigration. Okay, so what you see is uh, these different curves. So anytime you have a J-shaped curve like this, your, um, you've got exponential growth rate. And so this population has a higher growth rate than this does, even though they're both exponential. And so the difference is that R max is bigger for this. And so we're going to define R max in just a minute. But what it means really is that you have a population like maybe bunnies um, who reproduce very quickly and make lots of babies compared to a population maybe of sheep that um, they, they take a, a little bit longer to grow up and they don't make quite so many babies um, with each litter. Maybe make one or two babies, maybe three, um, as opposed to bunnies that'll make you know a whole bunch and they reproduce much, much more quickly. So the change in the population over time equals this R max idea. Um, it's called the um, intrinsic rate of increase. Um, per capita. So again, per capita is per individual. So you can think of this as the maximum population growth. This is really your birth rate minus your death rate, assuming that there's no immigration or emigration. And then this n, this is the population size. So this has a, a higher R max. This one has a higher R max than this one does. But your population, so, so that gives you this curve compared to that curve. But let's just look at this blue curve first. The blue curve looks a little bit different here in the beginning than it does here or here. And that's because n is changing. So when you have very, very few individuals to start with, even with a high R max, it takes you a little while to get going. Once you've gotten going, though, your um, rate of increase happens very, very, very quickly. So you get this really steep curve by the end. And this just shows you that it's, you know, you're looking at a J-shaped curve. This is an example, um, a real life example of a population. This is a population of elephants. They would actually have a fairly um, slow R max, a fairly low R max because their gestation time is really long. 
Um, they only, I think they only produce one baby at a time and, um, you know, mom's pregnant for a long, long time, but even they can show an exponential rate of growth. And so this is um, Kruger National Park in South Africa. And I don't know when um, hunting was banned, but probably um, some point in here. And here's the J-shaped curve that ha that occurred as the um, population um, rebounded. Okay, the exponential growth curve um, really explains the beginning of what you would naturally see um, in in real life. The logistic curve is much more realistic. And so a logistic curve is anytime you see this S-shaped curve. So it's going to be an S-shaped curve. And the reason is that by the time you get to carrying capacity, the population is slowing down. And so at this point, there are still organisms born, um, but you have about as many births as you do deaths or about as many births plus immigrants as you do death plus immigrants with an E. So we're going to define carrying capacity, and carrying capacity um, is denoted by the letter K. That's on your AP Bio cheat sheet. And um, we're going to define this as the maximum population that the environment can support. And so that carrying capacity is going to be different for different organisms. So the carrying capacity for mosquitoes in a swamp is going to be much, much higher than the carrying capacity for muskrats in that swamp. And um, it also depends on the environment. So the carrying capacity for muskrats in a swamp is going to be much higher than muskrats in a desert because they don't live there. So carrying capacity varies based on the population that we're looking at and also based on the environment. Okay, so this is the difference between the exponential growth rate versus the logistic growth rate or growth curve. And there's different math involved in each. So this equation um, is fine, but it's not the one given on your um, AP Bio cheat sheet. So we're going to look at the next page for that one. So here we have the exponential growth rate, and that is R max. It says R, but assume R max times the total population. So let's just look at those two for a second. So there's the same R max for this entire thing, but the N is what's different. And so if you look in the very beginning of the curve compared to later in the curve, your rate of increase is higher here, right? Um, your instantaneous um, rate is going to be a line that's I'm trying to draw a tangent line here but um the rate the slope is much faster here than it is down here right and so what you're looking at is a small number here so your pop if your population size is very small then it takes a while to build up and start taking off um, but if your population is already higher then you're going to have a bigger number here where n is so when you do n times r you're going to get a faster um, rate of growth so with the exponential model the bigger you are the faster your rate of growth so we're looking here, we've got a, um, sorry, I can't draw a very good tangent. Um, we've, we've got an even higher slope than we do down here. So this is um, not realistic for continued growth forever and ever and ever. This logistic growth curve is uh, much more realistic. And so you're increasing, increasing, increasing. And right here, your rate of increase is still, you know, you've still got a positive rate of increase right here, but it's not as uh, fast of a rate of increase as it is here. So you're starting to slow down um, right here. So instead of continuously getting faster, you're um, starting to slow down. And the reason for that is that your population is very close to carrying capacity. And so the difference in math between these two curves is this part right here. And so you still have the intrinsic rate of growth, which again would be higher in elephants, uh, sorry, would be higher in mosquitoes than it would be in elephants. We're still looking at how big the population size is, right? That's N. But now you have to factor in how close you are to carrying capacity. So let's say carrying capacity for um, the muskrats in a swamp is, let's say, um, 100 muskrats per, I don't know, whatever area you are, right? And so that would be 100. And let's say we've only got two muskrats right, in the population. So 100 minus 2, so we've got 98 over 100. Well, that number is really close to 1, so that's actually not going to change this very much. So down here where the population size is small, you're actually looking at a curve that looks very, very close to um, an exponential curve. But let's say time has gone on, right, it's later on, 
And let's say you don't have just two muskrats. Now you have 90 muskrats. So the number here, minus, uh, 100 minus 90, that's going to be 10. 10 over 100, well, wow, that's cutting down this a lot. So you're still increasing, but you're not increasing very fast anymore. And so that's what the logistic curve does. Once you actually reach carrying capacity, 100 minus 100, well, that's zero. And so you're not growing at all anymore. You are still having babies, but let's say you add 15 babies that year. Well, you're probably having about 15 muskrats dying that year as well. So your rate of increase um, is is going to um, stop. And so your birth plus the immigrants is going to equal your death plus um, the emigrants. So you're still having babies born and you're still having organisms, um, animals or whatever they are uh, dying, um, but your rate is of each is going to be equal. Uh, here's another, um, another thing to notice here. This early growth is rapid and the later growth uh, slows down, down to zero. This is the point where growth begins to slow. So sometimes um, there's a, a question that'll come up sometimes in AP Bio that'll say, um, we want to harvest organisms, um, maybe mussels from a um, from an intertidal zone or whatever. Um, at what point in the curve would, would it be best to take them? And the answer is going to be right here because that's where they're at their maximum growth. If you take them when there aren't very many, it's going to take a lot of time for them to recover because they don't have a very big N, right? If you're doing R max times N and then times the K minus N over K, right? So if, if your population is small, then this part doesn't really matter that much. But if your population is really small, um, it's still going to take you a little while. You're not growing super fast at that point. But if you harvest them somewhere in here, that's your maximum rate of growth, um, you know, right about here. And that will um, be the best place for them to, um, you know, come back and continue to, to produce whatever it is that you're trying to harvest. Um, this is just an example of... Um, population growth, let's say the, the carrying capacity is 1,500. As you approach 1,500, your um, re rate of growth um, goes down to zero. But right here, as your n is very, very small, um, this is very close to 100. And so this is really the exponential part is the part that um, is the most important in that equation. Okay, in the real world, you end up typically not reaching carrying capacity and staying exactly there. You tend to sort of hover around carrying capacity. So if you see a plot um, with, you know, increases along here, and then you see numbers like this, you know, dots like this, you want to get your line of best fit and draw a line right through the center and call your carrying capacity, you know, something in the middle of this area that's, you know, up and down, up and down. Okay. So lots of things can um, change population size over time. Um, could be that the weather is really particularly bad in one year or good in another year, or there are more predators around or, um, or whatever. Here's this idea of overshooting your carrying capacity. So this is showing you um, almost an exponential rate of growth here. And then if you um, assume that this is carrying capacity, they're overshooting the, the carrying capacity here. And you might have so many organisms, um, deer in this case, that they, um, maybe they eat the, there's, there's too many of them for the environment really. And so they're eating the natural resources at such a high rate that maybe they're killing them. So maybe they're stripping the bark off the trees or um, eating the, you know, whatever they eat up and, and killing the plants that, that keep them alive. And then you might see a crash here and it takes um, the environment a while to recover. If the environment never really recovers, you might get a new carrying capacity that's actually lower than the original one. So it's it's important for a population not to overshoot its carrying capacity too much um, because if it does, it might degrade the environment and decrease carrying capacity for that particular environment. Maybe that environment can't um, grow back the trees anymore because the soil was washed away because the trees were dead and then there were no roots and the soil got washed away. So it might um, long-term uh, damage the, the environment. Um, and then there's this idea of um, if you have too few um, of a certain type of organism, you um, might actually have this other thing going on where you're not um, actually able to recover. So if you have too few 
um, of a certain type of organism, maybe they're um, they're exposed to more predators because there's so few of them and they, they're not in a big herd anymore to protect themselves. And so you might not get the rate of growth that you might expect.